breathe. Can you hear it? Welcome to Relay. Hello. Hi. Barbiturates. Laughter. Not what I was going for, but okay. We've got a second national animal. Not Evicacus. Pardon? I'm sorry. What is it? A Norwegian rat. Mmm, okay. Norwegian rat? Can you tell? Because it's got horns. Yeah. Laughter. Welcome to the Relay Station. That was a brief insight into our chat before we go live. Word for word, what we were talking about earlier. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, yes. Uh, yeah. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Relay Station, where we talk about Star Citizen. And Norwegian <laughs> rats! Apparently. Horny Norwegian rats. Horny Norwegian yeah. rats, yes. Um, <laughs> you can't forget that part. <laughs> Triangularity, thank you so much for joining us. Well, Thank you, well, Triangularity. Nice to see you pleasure. again. What have you been up to? How you doing? Well, I've been uh, well, doing my life as usual. Uh, <laughs> following the uh, following the streams I got now and then on Saturdays. Uh, well, life is good. Streams are also good, and it's good that you're here. Um, for anyone interested out there, I am not yet drunk. I just, uh, oh, have some energy like today. This is the first time he's had energy in months. Yeah, actually. I don't know what happened. I don't, I don't know what happened to him, but. Uh, it's been weird. Absolutely everyone who just watched that is so glad that your underwear does not have flies on it. <laughs> They're shorts. Guess what? Today is the first day so far this year that it's like short weather outside. <laughs> What is it? Only minus five? No, it's it's like twenty right now. Ugh. It's fantastic. Twenty four actually outside. And there's sun. We're seeing the sun for the first time in months. Um, hey, guess what? Uh, guess what, David? What's that? It snowed in Canmore yesterday. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it, it, anyway, it snowed in Algonquin. It snowed in Algonquin Park earlier this week. Um, here's the thing. Three days ago, it was five degrees, and today it's 24. Yep. So. Yeah, we hit 30 this week, and then, uh, hit 30 this week, it was super hot, and then it was six, uh, yesterday. So, welcome to spring in Canada. Hey, everyone. Sounds like Norway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it would be a lot like Norway. I mean... The Scandinavian countries in Canada are basically the same place, just speaking different languages. So what are we going to customize to their liking for three ninety nine? Anything Your haircut? they want. Oh, Eris. hey. All right. For three ninety nine, he'll shave half of his beard. <laughs> <laughs> I you mean, get to choose which half. I just hope I get another three ninety nine to. to... <laughs> <laughs> hey, Canada's pretty good. Oh, it's man. it's a compliment. Yeah, Canada's pretty good, but don't don't even think you can compare to Scandinavia. Oh, no. Scandinavia. Uh huh. You know, you know Scandinavia, the collection. Yes, the, co the collection of <laughs> the Scandinavia, con the conglomerate of <laughs> <laughs> the raiding side. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh. so I'm very uh, now sorry, that... Triangularity. That you have to be on this. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking about how, how what, 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 what have uh, uh, did I say yes to this? It's gonna. <laughs> no, I mean, help me. I mean, were... <laughs> you did say before we started that if you weren't on, you'd be watching. So, I mean. That's fair. Which is more painful so far? <laughs> is this more painful to watch or to be a part of? 
Uh, it's cringe-worthy anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> Perfect! Funny That's what we're going anyway. for. Definitely. Okay. We've gotten through the intro. Hopefully some people have, uh, have showed up with, what, with the notifications and things. Uh, let's talk about Star Citizen. Oh, right. Yeah, that's what we do in this show. So, uh, we had we had uh, some stuff happen this week. Which yeah. would you like to talk about first, Mr. Host? You know what? I think we should start right by going in and talking about customization. Because that okay. seems to be the bigger I thing. I customized my ship. Did you? Uh-huh. So you can already go in and customize ships you already own? Yeah. How do you do it? Uh, my account, go to the hangar, go to the ship, and then hit the customize button. And it's only for the uh, Origin series? Yeah, this is the 300 series so far. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so, you know what? Triangularity, let's let's start with you. Because um, we've, we've had, well the rest of our thoughts on uh, on the customization last week and the week before. What are your thoughts on, on the customization system? Well, it's um, it's a really good system, actually, because uh, I like how we are supposed to be able to customize your own ship. So uh, I think it's a solution for... It's a solution that they can both earn money on it and make people happy because it looks really, really good and it, uh, well, the system works fine. So, um, I actually want to say I, I haven't played with it uh, on the site yet. I've just watched the um, the video of it. But I did recently buy a new car, and I went through the whole, like, the car company's customization tools and customizing all the options and the colors and this and that. And I think it's really, really sad that CIG have made a better car customizer than car companies <laughs> have. car companies, yeah, totally. <laughs> um, it is more intuitive. It shows you immediately the changes you're making this this tool that cig have made works better than uh any of the online car customizer tools that i tried um cig if you're listening maybe you guys should sell this tech to some car companies because holy shit they could they could really use it i was gonna say you know that might not be a bad... Dis- They've already built it so that they can have different customizers for different uh, ship manufacturers, so maybe there's a source of income for them. Out of interest, in, in your car, what coffee maker did you go for? Uh, I don't know. It just makes hot coffee. That's all I cared about. Ah, <laughs> uh, you guys... Um, that's, why I'm, that's why I'm you know here all the time. Yeah. I hope that's why someone's here. Um, uh, yeah, okay, so CIG doesn't offer coffee, or, like, CIG offers coffee makers and meal makers, and BMW doesn't, but BMW sh- lets you customize the stitching on your car, and the the rim, like, the, the wheel rims, and, like, all these various options that you do get to customize on the cars, and... The sites that they have suck, mm. and this this actually looks like it's clean. It's well laid out. Um, I do like that it looks like they're gonna. It's gonna be customized per manufacturer too, yeah. right down the road. Yeah, it will. Yeah, this um, is just the origin. This is the origin customizer that they <laughs> built. There, there is uh, some some uh, manufacturers that actually do uh, the customization a bit better though. If you if you actually go um, into another kind of b- branch like uh, motorbikes, right? Yeah. Go to Indian motorcycle and play around with the customization tool they got, and it's it's nice. It's I- even better than the standard. Tesla's Tesla's customizer is also really good. It's yeah. just 
I mean, Kia's was ass. Mazda's is ass. Out, um, Subaru has one of the worst designed websites I think I've ever seen in my life. Um, anyway, sorry, I've just I've just bought a car and I've I've got all these car sites in my my head. Um, I'm uh, currently going through the customizer so I can show you what my ship looks like. Sounds good. Um, but that is that is the only thing that my only trouble with it currently is that after you customize your ship. You can't see it again on the website. You have to go in the game, which I guess isn't a big deal. Man, but... it's like they want you to launch Star Citizen or something. Bust. I know. <laughs> a bunch of assholes. Uh, Shiver, what, what are your thoughts on, on seeing the system? It's pretty good. It's uh, nice. To, like you say, it's nice and intuitive. And it's another reminder that the website and things are going to link up together with the game, which is, mm -hmm. you know, it's just one of those things that's... Um, like a very small preview of the future where we're not at a computer, but we can log into the website and troll our org mates or whatever from <laughs> wherever we are in the world. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, okay. an, insight, an insight into Shiver's future career. <laughs> of trolling? I, that's his current yeah. career. I know, his current and future career. Okay, so I want to talk about something while we're talking about the customization because I've got a complaint. I know. You have a complaint? I know. Fuck. It's mind-boggling. It's never happened before. This is going to be the first time. Never. But, uh, and you you all already know my complaint. And I'd imagine that some people watching can probably figure out my complaint. But I'm still going to complain about it. They're trying um, to sell things. It's <gasps> No, that's not my complaint. So I want to preface this by making sure you understand. My complaint is not that they are mm. trying to sell things. Because you can watch the price go up and down as they make uh, changes on the site to to the ship, right? Different colors will add a dollar to to the ship cost. Um, mm -hmm. the The coffee maker is two dollars, and the this is four dollars. Like, and as you add things, it adds cost, and it changes mm -hmm. the cost of your ship. Um, I'm again, and I said this a previous week. I'm fine with them having that outside of the game for real money because I know that they want to make more money and that's fine. They have to fund the game somehow as long as it's also in-game, which it will be. This entire system is also going to be in-game, which is important to remember. Um, my only complaint is I really think that they should have shown this in UEC, not in dollars. Um, showing it in dollars just... It sets the tone of buy this in the real world, pay a buck for this, pay a buck for this useless coffee maker, pay a buck for this. And it it gives more ammunition to the people that are going to be like, I hate this CIG or nickel and diming people. It's a scam. It's it's more ammunition. Can I ask a question? Yes. So if you were buying a game package and you bought the 315p, 315p game package, and then you go in and you get to customize your ship as part of buying your buying your game package, and all the prices were in UEC, but your game package was in US dollars, how no. in the hell would you understand what you were doing? No, no, no. I, like, on the site, it needs to be in dollars. I'm just saying for this video, they should have showed it in, in UEC. In game? Okay. Yeah, that's all. But they haven't built it in game yet. I know! <laughs> I, David's very demanding. I am triangularity. <laughs> as someone who doesn't use a dollar sign for currency, did you get the that impression that Eris is saying that they give off? Uh, the thought, actually, uh, I had the thought, uh, but I, uh, when I was my next th thought was that they have said. They're going to earn money on non uh, game mech oh, uh, game mechanical changes. Uh, so uh, I'm totally fine with it. Uh, so I'm not. <laughs> I don't have a bad beef uh, on it. So. So am I literally the only one here who just saw that and went, "Who the fuck's going to pay money for that?" Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I made a whole bunch of changes and customized my ship. I didn't spend a single dime on it. Because yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna spend real were life money of, on a coffee maker in game. No, there were lots of good free options in the yep. customizer, especially right now during the celebration thing. There's a bunch of paint options that will be available later, or might be a dollar later. Um, 
and um, but no, I didn't spend any money on it. I'm I sure also, there's definitely people who <clears throat> want to or would or just don't care enough or make I, so much money that a dollar is nothing to them. I will yeah, also. Yeah. <clears throat> my other thing on this is I like being able to choose this and choose to spend a dollar. And be able to look at the skin and say, I like that skin. Yes, to me as a person, that skin is worth $1 rather than, ooh, I like that skin. I'm going to spend $50 on loot boxes until I can get it. Yeah, totally. Yeah, no, that's uh, I, I honestly, I don't think loot boxes are long for the world anyway. Uh, more and more governments are starting to yeah. view them as gambling and they'll be gone pretty this is it's all it's all cosmetic. None of this is going to change the gameplay, so I'm completely okay with them selling it. I just wish they had shown it differently for the people that get angry at Star Citizen always because they always find I know they always find something, but anyway, what um, do you think about uh, the um about the uh pack uh, what am I trying to say here the uh, the trim level option basically that they have for each ship like the weapon like packs? packs the like yeah shield shield power plant weapons the whole loadout they um, were like they were like five to ten dollars i think mostly what do you think about that triangularity the the being able to buy the weapon packs well you could all, uh, always buy a bigger ship mm. uh i mean as long as everybody got the same option of doing this, and the cost stays down. Well, and you used to be able to buy your weapons in on the Voyager Direct store anyway, right? Like, this isn't... Yeah, yeah, of course. Nothing here is really changing. You've been able to buy weapons for years. Too long, actually. <laughs> you've been able to buy weapons before they could really give you the weapons and make your weapons change out you know yeah so I, I, I personally view those options as like I don't, I, maybe I'm alone on this but I, I view the package options as like uh, almost the they make almost the most sense to me because it, it is exactly what they're going for with like the car customizer because it's exactly the same thing you have on those yep you're like hey i want to buy my honda civic but oh i can buy the sport package which gives me a much better honda civic <laughs> you know there you go uh it's basically the same deal yep no i i agree with that i'm completely okay with it um just show it differently uh yeah so there was that this week. Oh, What's they up? can't. I mean, it would be very for detractors to say, you know, oh, well, this is, you know, look, they're selling a two dollar coffee machine. Uh, have you ever heard of Monocle Gate? <laughs> of course, I haven't, but it sounds interesting. Well, e Eve Online started um, uh, their first release. I think it came with the first release of Walking in Station, which was one room, but that doesn't yeah. matter. Uh, they also had this um, cosmetic shop where you could buy bits of clothing, in which was a monocle for your character that only you see, because you would only see it in your captain's quarters in a station, for $80. <laughs> uh, it, things like this have happened. This is horse armor in extreme. Yeah. Well, that's an extreme. That's probably one of the most extreme ones I've ever heard of. Horse armor was insane. <laughs> it's the first wow. like microtransaction ever. <laughs> it's horrible. And you know what? The weird bit is, if they'd have done that now, today, Reno you know, horse armor for Skyrim, two quid, everyone would be like, yeah, alright. Yep. Was it really two? I think it was, thought it was it like was five. No, I, it, it, yeah, it was more expensive than that, but it was stupid. That was the thing that made it so ridiculous. If it had been really cheap, people wouldn't have even cared. It was that it was like the price of a normal expansion pack for the game. And it was well, like, this, it, this was the still hell? the day when they were doing expansions for Oblivion. You could get like exactly. Shivering Isles for 15 quid, and that added a lot of gameplay. I think they I mean, hadn't figured it dead. out yet. <laughs> and they have now figured it out, but different. Horse Armor oh, was five. I mean, I, I bought Horse Armor. It was ridiculous. 
Still that, that is actually a good question. Is that uh, how how much money is uh, okay uh, sum for doing stuff like this? So is fifteen dollars too much, too little for a game or weapon, a weapon pad package? Here's my um, thought on that. Or sorry, continue. Oh, yeah, sorry. No, that was my question. So, <laughs> so my my answer on that is, it is entirely up to the person. To me, fifteen dollars is not enough. Is too much for an, an upgrade pack. I don't care that much. I would rather try and earn it in game. But to someone else, maybe it's worth it. And. I, so I hate to say not, capitalism, but capitalism. You might not get the 315, GT, 315 PGT, but you might get the XC, which is $6. Maybe. But Shiver. like, you should care, though. Why? You should care, because it needs to be good value. It needs to actually have someone yeah. buy it. It needs to actually be a viable source well, of income for this game that you want to play. Otherwise, this game that you want to play is no longer going to be affordable, and they're just going to go. And I, I, I think CI, that's on CIG's end, right? They have to determine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, everything has to be balanced. And uh, th this is one of the advantages of having players as 10% of the economy rather than controlling it is they control the economy. Therefore when they are releasing these uh, bundles or whatever packages in future they have a, they it's already going to be somewhat balanced they're going to have this chart they're going to find the right sort of way to look it up and mm. then they're going to say you know we need to make x amount of profit on this it needs to be sold for x amount it can't be too expensive otherwise it's yeah and so on yeah and that's kind but, of already yeah. what they do like they said internally the way they price ships is they just have a chart with all the components and they're like well it has these components whoop so let's say know. let's tr 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 translate this into a bigger ship then. Uh, let's go for um, <laughs> a ninety jump or something like that. A ninety uh, jump stripper poles in every room. <laughs> yeah, uh, and are we supposed to pay a hundred dollars? Yes. Or maybe that's an uh, entire game package. It's but but it's a hundred dollars to someone that has an eight ninety, right? So, it, and again, it goes back to cars. When I was looking at cars, I was looking at like, okay, so this package is two grand more and this package is four grand more. Now, four grand is a lot, but four grand more on a $40,000 car, okay, maybe that's worth it. Like, it's not, it, it's going to be, I don't know. They're going to have to yeah, figure it out. Or Four grand on a fifteen thousand dollar car is a lot different than four grand on a forty thousand dollar car. Yeah, yeah. It's it's going to take them time to figure it out. Um, mm -hmm. But they've got time, really. Uh, so let's actually talk about that eight ninety jump and the stripper um, poles. Why can't you put? I, I, well, I mean, I, I think I think you must be trolling, but. Um, uh, Tenel TV, I'm not sure why you can't put a box in the cargo bay of the 315P, given that it has a cargo bay. Anyway. <coughs> uh, 890 Jump. Bugged, that's why. Oh, it's bugged. Thank you, Bryce well, Arena. Half the game's bugged right now. If you want to complain about bugs, there's it. <laughs> I still I appreciated the comment and thought it was amusing. Really? I well yeah, yeah. I thought it was amusing. I paid sixty five dollars for my three fifteen P, which I can't put a fucking box in a fucking cargo bay. Yeah. But I can color it for two fucking dollars. All my friends laugh at me. I thought that was funny. Yeah, it was good. Um, okay, what do you guys? More, I guess. So I'm I want to complain more, but because well, I, I hate. I hate the 890, but uh, yes. what, are, what are your thoughts on the uh, the bridges for the 890? Uh, are you really uh, going to complain about the fact that they put a battle bridge on it? Yes. <laughs> uh, let's start with uh, let's start with Shiver. Shiver, what are your thoughts on the 890? 
I think it's friggin' amazing. They've really thought this through. They've got a battle bridge on it for when everything fucks up on the primary one, or you were just too pissed drunk by the primary crew, so the sober secondary crew. <laughs> <had to come laughs> in. Okay, so there, that's useful. Fine. You've got like the the fake bridge up top that the drunken partiers can go and revel in because, mm -hmm. and then you've got the actual captain Me down at the bottom. Now you've said that, you've given me a serious tactical idea of if you are boarded, the first place any group is going to go is the bridge. But what if you've just got a load of distraction on the main bridge and you're all doing something in the secondary bridge? And a bunch of actors playing the roles of, like, captain and... <laughs> what, what do you think? Contracted AI. <laughs> Triangularity, what do you think of the, the, uh, the two bridges? The concept, uh, concept of uh, this is really good because it makes uh, that ship special. It's a luxury. It's a luxury uh, ship, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. they are supposed to have the best of the best, and a double bridge is plenty of uh, good reasons for me. Is anybody else suspecting that they built the ship and then they're like, "We don't have enough stuff." To put in here i'm, I'm suspecting so, they were like we well, built this <laughs> ship oh we've got this this square in the basement where there's nothing there i'm oh, just making a second bridge exactly i think that's what happened but it's great <laughs> uh i find it completely and utterly ridiculous i hate the battle bridge you would. um <laughs> Unless they make it a giant hologram where you can see out of it, it is closed off, it is separated from the rest of the ship. Uh, it's exactly where you, like... David, that's the whole point. No, no, but, but okay, so you're, you're in the normal bridge, <laughs> right? Because why would you not be in the normal bridge? And then you get attacked. And you're like, saddle up, everyone. We are abandoning our positions and retreating to the battle bridge. Run away, run down the stairs, run down some more stairs, run around three hallways, go into the wrong room, go back out, go into the right room, get into the battle bridge, sit down. Ah, oh, fuck, we're blown up already. It's so far away from the real bridge. Also, on the real bridge, you have all of these extra... Um, extra displays that they even talked about. We've got all these extra displays because there's so much going on this ship that you're going to need all of these extra positions for people, right? Mm -hmm. And then on the battle bridge, they're gone. There's three positions. Yeah, because those are the ones you need for battle. But, but he said there's a captain's <laughs> chair and two gunner's chairs. So what about mm -hmm. the, the engineer and like the shield tech and the... Like, are they... Are you abandoning your shield tech and your, like, your engineer and your, like, navigator up top to deal with... Yeah, they're, they're To far. die? It's a common <laughs> cover, you know. I just... It seems so unnecessary. Mm. And then, oh, we're being boarded. Let's go out and go out and go all the way around right here. And then we can get to our armory. Like, why is the armory so far away from the battle bridge? Like, they're all so far away from each other. It's it's like, you know what? The Enterprise D, when they need to battle, they don't run away and hide somewhere. They separate the combat part of the ship. And they all stay on the bridge, because guess what? It's the bridge. Actually, there is a battle bridge on the Enterprise. Yeah, but when they separate the saucer, they stay in the normal bridge, do they not? Not if they're going to the battle bridge. The battle bridge is on the drive yeah. section. I thought they stayed in the That's, that's base literally part. the point of the battle oh. bridge. Yeah. No, the battle bridge is on the base section. They but, abandoned the saucer. But they, but they separate it. So yeah, you need... A, nice. Fine, you need a second so bridge. So now, now you're... The 890 doesn't giving, separate. Now, now you're giving them extra things to do with 890. Now they have to make it morph. <laughs> well, no, I'm just saying because it doesn't morph, the battle bridge is unnecessary. It should be a third sauna. <laughs> do you know what technically you're actually right <laughs> i know i'm right shiver that's the I'm... worst bit i've got no reason to say actually <laughs> no nope, you're entirely correct i'm yeah. just enjoying the rant uh, sorry so I, do think it's too, 
I do think it's too far. Um, that's something they can fix, though, considering the ship's still being built. <laughs> but uh, yes, uh, I I just I just I don't know. I I have a hard time really getting too up in arms about this ship because it's so ridiculous. <laughs> I I, it, I I don't know what the layout is for uh, crew living areas near the battle bridge or something, but maybe you need you could use the battle bridge specifically for a specific group of people that are always near the battle bridge and when you're going into combat because you don't need shit loads of panels and things to say there's a ship over there charging right for us. You just need the bare essentials, the less um, things to distract you, but the more information, still... the better. Whereas but we still look out of windows. Glittering lights and things. Yeah, we still yeah. look out of windows. No, none of the ships in Star Citizen need windows. But my nope. god, if you put a strut on one of those windows, holy <laughs> shit, the community's going to flip out. But you encase the bridge entirely in concrete and no one can see out of it. We love it. Oh, look at the battle I'm bridge. Sure, oh, I'm it's sure called the battle have, bridge. I'm pretty sure it'll have, it, it'll have screens to show the outside. It's probably screens around there, right? Mm. Yep. Sorry. Sorry, I'm just... I'm He's just not throwing the, the panel bridge. down and stick it's a head like out. Battle Bridge, that guy, not at all. Nope. I just, I don't like the Battle Bridge. That's all. I, I mean, what, I don't what, like the 890, but I also don't like the Battle Bridge. Okay. Would you like the Battle Bridge better if it had, like, deployable machine guns that popped out of the roof if someone tried to come in? I would like the battle bridge better if it were on a ship that was supposed to see battle and it had an actual purpose on the ship. On the 890 jump, it seems... <laughs> 890 has a lot of weapons. It has a lot of weapons, but it's not supposed to go, go searching out combat. It's supposed to be no. a pleasure craft that can defend itself. I, I find the... You I guarantee you somebody's going to use it as like a what people use it for carrier. what people use it for I don't care. <laughs> what I care about is this idea that we have a pleasure craft. We have people on board the pleasure craft hanging out in the pool and we're under attack and the captain and his first mate is going to run away and barricade himself in a tiny safe room and guess what all the other passengers are going to die. Because he doesn't yep. care about them because he's an 890 jump owner. <laughs> Pretty much. The VIPs can die as long as the captain survives. Right? Anyway. <laughs> oh, man. Sorry, that's that's just the second of my tech, little uh, little tech rants Mojo, today. Tech Mojo thinks that the 890 punches below its weight. <laughs> um, okay. Hover. Let's talk hover. Tranquility, what do you think about this? Uh, they showed off some new hovery stuff this week. I really, really like that. It seems like uh, it's going to be very fun to hover. Uh, I also like that they have uh, iterated that they have changed uh, the hover mode for the the miners, the miner ships. So uh, it can actually pivot a bit more. Than the rest of the uh, rest of the ships, so I think this is going to be really nice. Um, uh, I'm looking forward to see that uh, happening in a storm. Yes, mm -hmm. when, when you're being buffeted around and stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's going to be cool. Also, my mining just got a lot more interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, it. <laughs> it makes sense. Okay, you know what? No, you've got to land. land or you have to or you have to master hovering six feet off the ground. Yep. <laughs> Which um, you know can be cool. But I actually this is it's been the most unrealistic aspect, I think, of flying in Star Citizen. Has been the I can just hang there in midair deal. Yeah. Um, I can I can hang facing straight down. Just here. Oh, look at me. I'm facing straight down, and there's no issue. No. No, it's silly. And it felt weird in the ship, but even, but the exterior view of it was so ridiculous. It was just like... Well, and, and it doesn't really make sense, because the, the, ships, the ships aren't really built for that, right? They don't have thrusters to do that. Or at least they shouldn't. Well, not, would you? 
it, it, the biggest problem was that it didn't look like it was tr- doing anything to stay there. Yeah. Like the thrusters weren't thrusting it crazy to try and keep it in that spot. They were just ship was just sitting there. It's like, well, it's not magic. <laughs> it can't just hover there with no effort. Yeah. So no, I, I like I like the in. addition of hover. I think it's going to make it a lot more fun to be <laughs> flying around at slower speeds on planets. Um, We're going to hit a lot more stuff too. It's going to be great. Good. People need to learn to fly. Yep. Right. Yes. That's, Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's all the videos from this week. Oh, yes. It is. Okay. Okay. Sorry, we don't have any, we don't have any clips from uh, SC Live this week. Um, there was lots of visual effects, but um, there wasn't like a lot of. I don't know. I didn't have any great desire, or or I uh, think there was any great need to uh, clip them all. Um, they uh, this talked a lot about uh, about particles and how they work and how uh, how they create them, um, how they don't murder performance uh, with them. Um, if you like uh, visual effects. Uh, it's pretty interesting hour long conversation. So go take a watch. Tech Mojo, stop asking uptime. Stop it. I can't. No. Oh. At least he's not asking about updogs. No. No. Um, What's the op- opposite of. An up dog. Down, Down cat. cat. That's what I figured. Okay. Uh, okay, so I'm everyone ask us some questions about stuff. I don't actually yes, know why. Oh, that's why, because it's open twice. If I close that, that should be better. Okay, let's try this again. Yes, it was open twice, that's why it was uh repeated. Oh, I fixed it. Two I fixed instances. It. Yeah. Um, um, should we talk about the roadmap and such? Yes. I don't have the roadmap on me. What are you doing? My God. My, yeah, okay, okay. my this is- RSI site isn't loading right today. Well, the, the RSI site won't help you with the roadmap. We use Odysseus because he's amazing. <laughs> he is. Uh, I will send you the link right now. Okay. Uh, ask us your questions. Bam, there's one of them. Oh, but I can't. What do you need me to do? Paste it in the. Oh, oh in t- Twitch chat? chat? Yeah. No, in the the uh, the group. Oh, the group chat. One. I know what group I'm chat. doing. Oh. No, we don't know what we're doing. Don't ever listen to, to us. <laughs> we don't. At all. Um, okay, let me see how I can get this. Total professionals. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, totally, always, obviously. Um, I figure I should take a moment to mention there is a uh, Falcon Nine launch this week, and it is Radar Sat, Canada's biggest space mission ever. Period. Um, it's kind of pedestrian, but uh, but pretty cool for Canada. Uh, it's a billion dollar satellite constellation, and uh, it is to help us. Uh, Burn down slower. So, yeah. Burn down slower? Yeah, well, it's uh, disaster management. Mm, yes. We're and, I mean, lots that. of other things too, but that's one of the big ones is disaster management. <clears throat> okay, let's and, take uh, a look. Given, and, and most of our disasters recently in Canada have been either were very, very wet or very, very on fire. Yes. Um, it's it's almost <laughs> like the planet is warming up. There's more water coming out, and things are catching on fire more. Crazy. That, that would be very. That would be right on the money. <laughs> okay, what do we got this week in the roadmap? Uh shit. Um, we got uh, shit on the roadmap. Three three AI tasks had to be moved back to three point seven, and one task from three point seven was kicked all the way down the road to three point eight. 
Rest stop um, unoccupied. Okay. Unoccupied rest stops have been moved to 3.8 with uh, her or with uh, Microtech. Um, and 3.8 tasks were moved to 3.7. Obviously, they weren't making enough progress on that front. Um, however, uh, client-to-server actor networking uh, rework is done, which is awesome. That's an important one. Uh, yes. They're all important, David. Uh, I mean... No, they're not. Exterior variations of rest stop space stations is much less important <laughs> than networking tasks. Agreed. Right. Um, so, client to server act because this might confuse some people. Client to server actor networking rework is described as improvements to the upstream part of the actor networking responsible for communicating player actions from the local client to the server. This will pave the way for downstream improvements and solve a variety of validation issues. So this is about characters, um, you know, juddering around and not being in the right place for everybody. Um, they're trying to get that all sorted out because really in the, the final game that does need to be solved. And as we all are aware, not every final game has that solved. Yes. <laughs> um, so we also lost a whole bunch of the AI stuff. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, Shiver? Not really surprising, considering the amount that they want to do with AI. Um, sometimes things slip. In this case, most of the AI slip. Mm -hmm. But it, it's a huge, complex system, and <clears throat> yeah, it it's one of those things that once they've got this done, it's going to take time. But once it is done, it's going to be a very robust system. They can just add to, tweak, and so on, and it will be such an experience for us. Um, one of the things I noticed is that they seem to have grouped the NPC improvements together now in 3.7. So I, I think that may have been on purpose to be like, hey, let's just do all this stuff at once. Right. Um, the ship AI 3D pathfinding, I think, was actually mostly a Squadron 42 task. And it was also moved in that schedule. So. What are your thoughts, Triangularity? See anything that uh, <laughs> that you like or dislike moving around? Well, I do dislike the AI problems, uh, but I do think that things are taking a bit longer time than expected. Yeah. So, my fear is that they're going to postpone a bit in the 3.7 patch. Uh, mm -hmm. So, they're just pushing the task further back. Yeah. But it's, it's normal, you know. Um, I uh, noticed that when it comes to the server to client uh, client to server actor network rework, they have the opposite schedule for 3.9. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think it's a bit weird. Uh, isn't, isn't that kind of uh, linked together? So why can't they do the opposite um, after this? Because they're into that system right now. I thought the same, it's, but I, I don't know. <laughs> one system goes in, let, let's break it down to one system goes in one direction. This is the client sending to the server. They've probably allocated enough time for everything to fuck up with that. Once they've had the experience with that fucking up and knowing exactly how to make it so, you know, you're no longer T-posing and juddering along, they can <laughs> use that knowledge when they're doing the server to client and you know it's a bit more experience to help so it won't be such um such a shock to the system when they introduce them so rather than do two problems at once and have no experience with it they're going to do it one at a time and then have the experience from the one and then see if they can apply it to the other yeah. i would guess that makes sense um, and uh another kind of a uh, thing i have seen is that they have the same rate as last week so they going on the same kind of percentage Yep. In completion and uh, completion, so it seems like around seven percent is actually what they're supposed to make from week to week. It might change, of course, but yeah, it tends to be really fast near the end because they're. I mean, if you think about it, if you think about you know you're working in an office and you're working on all these tasks and you have a deadline, a lot of times you don't finish them until yeah, real close to that deadline. 
Yep. Uh, anything in particular to, to take away from the squadron roadmap? Uh, yeah. Um, they finished uh, another stage of one of the chapters. So they're, they moved on to stage three for chapter 21. That was good to see. I always, I'm always looking at that schedule because that's really going to inform whether when the game comes out. Say, <laughs> hey, is the game ready to come out? <laughs> um, no, anyway. no, it's not. Sure isn't. Um, but uh, other than that, the only oh thing my goodness, really... hello. What? That's a familiar name, isn't it? It is a familiar name. <gasps> hello, Jay Lee. Someone missed How's all of our rants. Uh, uh, all of my rants, at least. I'm terribly disappointed. You can't. You can't get away with doing the innocent act, Jay Lee. You're too far beloved now. It's true. You can't hide. <laughs> <laughs> so true. So true. Um, so, hey, Jay Lee, what's your favorite thing in the Squadron 42 roadmap? Oh, I like the redacted and the redacted, but let's yeah. not forget the best thing of all the redacted. redacted. Uh, triangularity. So, uh, <laughs> Straight black. The, the rest of us have talked about, about this. Um, what are your thoughts on beta? Quarter 2 2020, beta. Uh, Seems far fetched. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> far fetched, and and we don't know really if it's going to be like a, something open or closed or what. But would let's say it was open, would you play Squadron Forty Two as a beta? Uh, oh, that's a hard question. Yes, um, that's why I ask it. It really depends on the quality of the beta and the beta. Uh, I probably would wait. Uh, I am a quite uh, patient guy, so I can wait. Uh, <laughs> a very, very good uh, quality for a Star Citizen fan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, well, it's it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. So yep. yes, but that that te- uh, that seems to be most people's answer is, I'd wait. Because it's so kind of close to a release. I mean, of course, we need to test the game. Uh, but, uh, well, I don't know. Uh, I have to wait and see. Yeah. I was going to comment on it, if you're okay with that. Go nuts, yeah. Um, I mean, I've commented on it before, but... Um, I definitely would wait, I think personally. Yeah. Um I just I don't I don't have a very good I, I tend not to play games twice. And if I'm only gonna play it once, I'm gonna play it when uh <laughs> when it's done. Yeah. Or I really want someone done. else to come on and just say, Oh, I test it. I test it so hard. <laughs> I just also me. I also is... love your, your far-fetched comment, uh, Triangularity. That is incredibly accurate. <laughs> yep. Uh, the thing is that uh, what you can do in the beta is that you can actually see how all the different endings are in in the story. So you can actually try different endings from what you're supposed to play in the end. And then when you do play through... You can have, yeah. You, you so know, you'll you can know get in advance, more of the story. So, yeah, it's all. I, I, I wouldn't be able to do it anyway. Uh, I'm gonna get us to some questions, even though we only have four. I'm terribly disappointed in everyone currently. Um, all right, Jay Lee, you have to answer, ask us questions. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, I want some questions from Jay Lee. Uh, let's start here. A degenerate asks, on a scale of 1 to 10, how erect is your merchantman for the new hover mode shown off inside Star Citizen this week? Uh, on a, what was it on a scale of what? Uh, I don't think the merchant band can hover. Uh, well, about 9. Not close to the ground. I... Depends. Yeah, I mean, 
new hovering is good. That's that's it. There was no merchantman. They're just asking based on a sliding scale of one is uh, there is no merchantman and two is, uh, ten is no, 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 you no, no, are no. inside the merchantman. That's no, the sliding I think scale. I think it's... I think it's mostly talking about the uh, the uh, flight penis. Yes, and how erect it is. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. This really is bizarre. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <sighs> I wonder if there's anybody at CAG that refers to that thing as a flight penis. It's got to be at least one. No. <laughs> I wonder how many puns are made about it being bizarre. None. 42. Uh, so, uh, Tanil from Istanbul asks, I have a Wait, ranger. Is that Istanbul, not Constantinople? Or is that nobody's business but the Turks? Oh, dear. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Uh, I have a ranger to upgrade, and I can't decide 315P or Titan. Which one is better? I mean, depends on what you want to do with it. As with all of these ship questions, I, I personally would say the 315. I would say the Titan is better for if you want to haul cargo with it. Um, if you want to explore with it or want a more rounded ship, I would say the 315. What do you think, Trey? Uh, let's show it also first. I can do it a little lost. Okay. Shiver, I was going to say the Titan... I was going to say the Titan for the same reason that Nakara gave for the 315. I think the Titan's a bit more versatile. Oh. Well, I would pick um, Cutlass Black. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say a not a Cutlass because Cutlass owners are uh, <laughs> the only people worse than 890 jump owners. I own a Cutlass. So do I. That makes me feel blue. Um, anyway, uh, I just wanted to mention red? that, uh, <laughs> I just want to mention that, you know how they have different custom ship customizers for each manufacturer? They will, yeah. I think that the, I think that the Drake one should be partially broken at all times and should just, like, glitch and, like, and things should just move around the page. I, I and, think the Drake... And sometimes it should, and sometimes when you click on something, it should come up with a missing image, like, logo. <laughs> Oh, that's a good. Uh, we'll get to that in a bit from Jay Lee. That that's one of those good <laughs> questions that we now have to think about. Damn it! But you don't get to know what it is until we get there. Um, yes, that's oh, fuck, that's a good one. Um, <laughs> Elise asks, "Do you think we'll be able to see our own character talk during cinematic dialogue in Squadron Forty Two? Would you like to see this from old footage? It looks like they did facial capture for the player." Uh, as well, yes, you yes, will. The player will talk. Yeah, you can choose. You can choose between between the third person or uh, yeah. the first person. So you can choose uh, for yourself. That's at least what they said. So, oh, and there's going to be some amazing clips of people getting into like deep conversations with NPCs and then just running away. Oh, yeah. in the middle of the conversation. <laughs> and hopefully, the NPC will be like, <laughs> "What." Okay. Or chasing hey, down the hallway going, you wanted this? Oh, we were talking. Anyway. I I still want to know what happens if you, like, in the middle of a conversation, pull out your gun and shoot someone. So they probably wouldn't think that's a very nice thing to do. No, no, not them. Like, someone, you're, you're, I'm talking to Nakara and Triangularity, right? And Triangularity is talking to me, and I just pull out my gun and shoot Nakara. And well, holster it, imagine... and will triangularity just continue talking to me? Isn't it going to depend on where in the galaxy you are? If you're in like um, high security area, you, you're going to get pounced on near enough immediately compared to no security where no one will just give a shit. People will wear Pretty t shirts much. saying, Air is shot first. It might, it might, <laughs> it, exactly. It might uh, intimidate triangularity somewhat. Yeah, uh, I'll probably go something like, uh, "How many bottles of uh, maple syrup do you need? Uh, do you want for that?" <laughs> <laughs> Twelve. Um, Elise asks uh. another one. 
What do you think happened to Hades 4, the planet that was mysteriously ripped apart by some incomprehensible force 300,000 years ago? Do you think that we'll encounter a larger threat than the Van Duel? Can I take I w- this one? Sure. I think someone divided by zero. I will go back to something I said like four years ago now in that I mean Chris Roberts likes <laughs> history someone is pushing the Vanduul because someone was someone was pushing the tribes into Ro- the like Visigoths? the Visigoths into Rome someone is pushing the Vanduul that's, dun, that's dun, dun. that remains my thought on the it. Yeah. Anyway, um, the Sultan... race that only the fans still even remember exists. <laughs> yeah, we can can I have, have a go. Yeah, of before course. We, before we continue. Yeah, yeah, do it. Yeah. Uh, I probably think that they would serve a bit bad coffee. So somebody found a planet smasher. So if you get that reference. Uh, not entirely, but that's mostly my fault, probably. Shiver didn't even get it. Oh, that's a bit weird, actually. Oh, I'm half dead. <laughs> well, <laughs> what's the other half? Wishing it was dead. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, where did Eris go? I don't know. Uh, All right, next question. Someone who sounds like uh, Mjolnir's half brother, Sultanir. Sultanir. Um, have you researched what a battle bridge is and how it looks? I assume that's going to be directed because Eris doesn't like the um, battle bridge on the 890 jump, nor does he see the point of it. What is the point of a battle bridge? Battling. Does any that I have ever done any research on anything in my entire life. Bear. Yes. Yeah, actually, that's that's fair. I've done a lot of... You, uh, you research buying a car a lot. I, I do a lot of research on beer. No, I have not researched a battle bridge. Um, Aren't I figure... you having a baby soon? Yes. Didn't you do some research into what to do to the careful <laughs> baby? No. You need to research how to build a battle bridge for the baby. I mean, yeah, that's that's fair. Uh, no, I didn't do research on what the battle bridge looks. I don't, I, I don't care about the historic value of a brat, fat, battle bridge or whether it makes sense. To me, the problem with the battle bridge is just that it's in the wrong ship, and also very far away from the armory, and also very far away from anything else of of importance. Um, yeah. Well, didn't you see? You just walk to the back of the bridge and then you fall through the floor. <laughs> just 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 hit tilde <laughs> type in no clip hit That's enter right. <laughs> um the, the the other problem with the battle bridge uh full of stan is that it is cool the point is that it's cool not that it's needed or on a ship that it fits in it's just let's throw in a battle bridge because it's cool no you don't need that battle bridge on an 890 jump that that space would be much better served by a third sauna. I maintain that, and I will always maintain that. It actually, actually, sauna? It actually could be cool if it actually was a private jail. Mm. So they could put people in there. And, well, Sounds interesting at parties. Private yep. jail or um, panic room. Bar. <clears throat> Panic Room. You've got all these rich people. Panic Room that like the... um, Oh, crap. What's... uh, The Vanguard? That can drop out its, like, middle... The entire middle part... Pod part as an escape pod. Mm -hmm. You have that battle bridge that's not a battle bridge, but an entire escape pod that drops out of the ship with your VIPs. That'd be cool. Imagine if you pressed that button accidentally. (laughs) <laughs> actually no that should be a swing pool 
Oh, uh, where are we? What's next? Uh, fast cart. Green fast cart. Fast cart. Uh, today it's ship customization. Do you do you think we'll soon have a Disco Lando customizer? And what would you customize? Uh, I'd take Disco back to like the full beard and the shaggy hair and the like weird sunglasses. I actually think we should go directly for Disco Chef. Yeah. <clears throat> but in real life instead of in the game. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I was thinking uh, Robo Lando. Half RoboCop, half Disco Lando. <laughs> yeah, all right. I, I, I can't beat that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pirate Lando. Pirate Lando, <laughs> yeah. Disco... Disco Lando, who is literally disco. Like like, like dressed up disco. in disco? Yeah. Yes, yes. With Platform with a shoe with, so big it's basically a fish tank. With a fro. Yep. Yep. Oh yeah. Yep. Disco literal disco Lando. I like it. Uh Folostan asks, remember the Voyager Direct store? I thought the new custom things would be kinda like that, but apparently not. Um they're going for the car manufacturer vibe like it is exactly like you would buy at a car place mm -hmm. a however the, no the knock-on effects could be one day after release or before at some point you could be on the website and do some shopping for your apartment basically you know like Amazon shopping for your in-game stuff, and you can be like, "Yeah, I'll have a coffee maker delivered to that place." And then when next time you log into your apartment, all this crap's there, and you're like, "Yeah, oh my Better god, better than Amazon." That would be really dangerous if there was an app for that, and you just sit there at work when you're bored, be like, "Oh yeah, I'll have one of those." Oh yeah, I'll have one of those. You um, got that on that... one screen. You got trolling your org mates on the other. Uh, I I will say. I don't know why that... this is my smartphone. Now that Jay Lee is here. Uh, and he can convey this message to the higher ups at CIG because it is an important message, and I believe that they should get uh, they they should get it. Um, I was making the the comment earlier that uh, the car customizer that CIG have made for the Origin ships is better than the actual car customizers that like car manufacturers have, and CIG should uh, sell the tech out to car manufacturers because their customizers suck. Yep, that's it. We solve uh, all the world's problems. Yeah, and speaking about speaking about customization and well, being able to buy coffee makers, we need IKEA to sponsor CIG and CIG so we can have an in-game IKEA store. In yes. Yeah. So. yeah. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Totally. All right. You know, you should never buy music from IKEA. Why not? <laughs> What's well, that? because you go there and you just get this sheet music. Okay, it's time to open up the Trappist Rochefort, uh, number 10. 11.3%. Uh, <laughs> okay. This one's a beer. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, that's a strong beer, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, just, just one second. So, we've actually made it to Jay Lee's question. So, uh, Jay Lee asks, When do all four of you feel like the PU should officially release with X amount of gameplay features? Um, where do we want to start with this? Who wants to start on when? Nakara, you want to start? Okay. I already know what my answer is, so I'm gonna yeah. for it. Um minimum five star systems and uh all of the major already announced careers um working in the game. That's where I'm at. Um obviously I hope the rest of the like, you know, the game works well and isn't super buggy. That's kind of a basic thing. You but, said minimum um, how many systems? Five. Five? Okay. Minimum five star systems and all of the careers that have currently been announced and have ships for them um, should be working. What are your thoughts, Triangularity? <laughs> I have to agree with uh, Nakara. Uh, it's something like those lines, but I would actually aim for 10 instead because well, I want more. 
Of course, we all work more. <laughs> but if we can aim higher, we might be able to get six or seven systems before they decide to release it. So, well, it's true. I mean, some of the systems will be a lot easier to make than than Stanton. So, um, but I'm just saying minimum five. In that, if they released with one, I would not be thrilled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Shiver. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I have a uh, a follow up, a follow up question afterwards. So, okay. Shiver, I, I'm going to be the person who says minimum a hundred systems, uh, all the gameplay mechanics that were, <laughs> yeah, everything that was put in the Kickstarter for and pets. Yeah, the V one point. No, no, not pets. They were. Uh, Stretch goal. I think Kickstarter is the minimum for no, release. Pets, you know, they said like, hundred on release. No, no pets, pets, pets were a stretch goal. Pets were uh, were post release. Yeah, but getting up to a hundred systems was also like. Are we talking initial Kickstarter or down the road? Initial Kickstarter. Okay. Oh, initial Kickstarter wasn't a hundred systems. It wasn't a hundred systems. Well, I mean, like, like the Kickstarter project. However, the Kickstarter oh, itself I see. finished. I see. Mm. Yeah. You know, with all the promises there, everything is after. You know, all the stretch goals after Kickstarter. So you want the them. hardest well, stuff of... first, and everything else after. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I the the gameplay. All the gameplay mechanics need to be in there. You know, multi crew exploration. Multi crew like, um, is the most Nikara important said. one. It's yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so Absolutely. I'm going to say something different from all of you. Because I'm that kind of bastard. Yep. I won't. Oh, and I think Jay Lee should do the uh, art for all of it on his own. Oh yeah, all of the uh, and, and not just single handedly. Yeah. One hand tied behind his back. No yeah. coffee breaks. And all the types of art too. Two D, three D, four D. All of the art and the music because yeah. music is art. Uh, and I want to so... see some one dimensional art too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, That's the line. <laughs> yeah. So here's my thoughts. I don't want to tie this to number of systems. I don't want to tie it to, uh, you know, gameplay. I don't want to tie it to stuff that was, was like in the Kickstarter. I want to tie this to when I would be comfortable going to someone and saying, hey, you who have never seen or heard of or tried Star Citizen you should go try this game. It is good and fun and ready. That's when it the PU should launch. Uh, it's not there. What what ready is? I still think is is viscous. Um, more than one. Be, do you think they can be ready with one star system? No, I think the minimum for ready <laughs> is probably three to five i don't think one is enough but for gameplay systems ooh, what is that coffee Isn't whiskey it... yep nice coffee um for gameplay systems i don't know i i'd be fine with like a for like a first take like a level one of of mining like because mining's i don't want to call it tears what's what do they call it tier like zero is tier zero it. of like mining right yeah that's the first step yeah yeah so they should be out of tier zero but i also don't know how far they're going to take things and when they're going to be finished so i i want to allow for evolution of the game systems that exist post launch uh it just it has to be fun it has to feel like a full game yeah absolutely it doesn't have to include everything that they promised at launch <clears throat> lots of that can come after just because of the i think the careers have to be made. there because that's which, why are you going to own a genesis starliner if all which careers all of them all of them F farming there aren't that many. Well, how many yeah. are there? I don't know, 20. When's the last time we even heard about those? Jesus. Um, yeah, they have been 
The other thing I'd say is my <laughs> one requirement is uh, the Endeavor has to be in. Once the Endeavor is in and you Which can Which means use farming the... has to be in. <laughs> yes. Once the Endeavor is in and all the systems required to run an Endeavor is in, then it can launch. Endeavor is literally the hardest ship to me. Yes. <laughs> it's like, hey, it's more than one ship. It has, a, depending on co- uh, on uh, design, has like a weapon tuning facility or a deep space uh, telescope or a farming or <laughs> or is a medical ship. Uh, <laughs> I think any so triangularity. You had a, a follow up question. Yeah. Yeah. Um... We're talking about release here, right? Yeah. So, yep. um, we want ho- to have all the kind of uh, uh, professions and gameplay in, in. So it kind of gets into the, what kind of content do we, uh, do do we want to see when we release? So the reason why I picked five or ten, it makes me a bit afraid of. What about the rest of the 95 systems they're talking about? So how many can they release a year? Let's say five. It's going to be 25 years or 20 years before we're done seeing all the systems. This is kind of uh, one of my fears of what we're going to see in the end. Of course, it can be automated uh, with all the kind of uh, good pr- programs they uh, do. But we hope. That's, that's... <laughs> yeah. So. All right, Jay Lee, you have how, an incredible here. We you need so, to get to one star system a week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so here's a question for Jay Lee. Uh, when are you going to launch it? <laughs> yeah, if you're asking us hard questions, we got to. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Fastcart asks, <laughs> Nakara, how much money has been raised since the 300 series customizations have gone live compared to concept sales? Almost none. <laughs> They're not making a lot of money. I think a lot of people are just uh, uh, choosing the free options, honestly. Um, they... I would say they probably bought brought in an extra maybe forty thousand dollars, um, which is like a couple hours of maybe even just one hour of a ship concept sale. Um, so yeah, um, where are we at here? Yeah, so. I would say uh, maybe I'll be a little more generous. They might have made like fifty or sixty grand. Well, that's about it. Oh, is that all? I mean, Just... it's really for for them. It's it's like a drop in the bucket. It might also it's that one might also be kind of hard to deal with because it's only one ship manufacture like one ship series. And mm-hmm. it's probably going to be a trickle thing. Like this, you'll see more of this when they launch more manufacturers and more like new concept ships. Because I'd assume that new concept ships will come with this kind of system in place already. So it's going to be a trickle effect. And it might be not that much on the first one, but over the course of a year, it's going to be, uh, we're, I think we're probably back into stupid money. Um, uh, oh yeah, uh, I mean, you... I mean, it's it's yeah, that one's definitely going to be a slow one. Sorry, triangularity. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, I just I was going to skip another direction. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, uh, my fear uh, is, I'm not completely sure about this, but uh, I think I heard sometime that we're be- being able to paint our own ships in game, and. Uh, I'm not completely sure about this. Uh, you probably can answer this, but if they are introducing this kind of, uh, kind of a customization, we will not see that. It's my kind of... Uh, well. mm, that's not what the FAQ said. Yeah, isn't this just like the first thing is um, they're doing... This is the very first implementation and it's as it's only the first implementation, it's from the 
origin standpoint, eventually yeah. they will have it so you can do whatever you want. Within it's, limitation. When you when you buy a new car, you don't get the option to custom paint your car there. You get to pick the manufacturer default colors. And what they're yeah. what they're doing as a first customization pass is this is the manufacturer, this is what you get. These are the manufacturer paint options. Down the road, will we be able to custom paint our stuff? I think they weren't really clear on that last time just because then the verse would be full of 890 jumps that look even more like dicks than than they already do um but will there be non-standard customization options yes so 80 dollars ask picking, jay lee for your own custom paint job picking up from that what it said in the faq is there'll be like chop shops in the verse where you can go there and you can get aftermarket um aftermarket customizations that are different than the yeah. manufacturer's ones and that includes paint so you'll be able to get like different paint options whether that gets down to so granular that you can choose the color of each panel i have no idea but um but there is at least more than what we have um and yeah i want a uh i, I kind of want a um um Oh my god, my brain just totally lost that word. Oh no, it's not there. I want the giant sword on the front of it, like like on, that's on the front of a gun, which my brain just totally bayonet. Lost. Bayonet. bayonet. Thank you. <laughs> I want a bayonet on the front of my three fifteen P. Just you know, for fun. All right. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm hoping uh, the I, chop shop can pull that off. I would really want want in game kind of uh, paint. Uh, uh, options because I want race stripes on my uh, acquired Bengal in game. <laughs> uh, yeah, chop shops will will happen. There will be aftermarket customization. The thing we don't know that we haven't had clarified yet is how, or as far as I'm aware, um, is how much cust like control over those additional customization options you'll have. I don't know if we'll be able to like go in with a paintbrush and paint our own whatever I also it. did mention ship decals are still on the on yeah. the like horizon they're still thinking about it uh they still want to do it so that's like ship names um ship uh like registry numbers like uh star trek has yeah um that kind of thing um but uh yeah <laughs> uh bryce arena asks what are your opinions on the latest development in the whole crytek and ci case I think we talked about that a bit last week, but uh Crytek is desperate. Well, it's been me. a <laughs> slight new development. Oh yeah, oh, what's, what's that? that? Go slight, shiver. Slight new development of uh Crytek are still trying to get more time and CIG are like but you don't you haven't done anything with the time you've had, why should you get more time? I mean that's 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 basically the TLDR as I understand it. Mm-hmm. That's, That's basically my understanding it, as well. It sounds fair to me. I mean, if they haven't done anything. They had months to do something and they didn't do anything. So I think CIG just wants the case to be over. Done with? Yeah. Yep. Uh, well, fast. I think CIG want to get the case done and over with and not have to pay the court costs or anything. <laughs> when, yeah. Yep. You know, nothing's been solved and they haven't been found. Uh, any anything. Of the, uh, accusations have been proven, so... Yeah, and, th and that's quite fair enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hopefully they'll they'll get the court costs covered because those are a lot. But man, Crytek and, are dumb. Anyway. Well, yeah, they're desperate. I think is the real word for that. Yeah. Uh, Fastcarts Bay asks, "Are you all as over origin shit as I am?" No, uh, I'm, I'm actually really. Stuff bloody excited to go customize my 315p uh straight up i'm excited and uh, i mean do i care about anything phases. beyond the 300 series like origin 600 and 890 series no because those are crap uh but the 300 series is great do you remember how how tired we were of ages stuff for a while because there were like 18 ages ships in a row <laughs> uh isn't it misc now that just has everything uh misc i don't think so i don't remember there was a time when it was misc there was a time when it was aegis 
Yep. It yeah. goes through phases. Yeah. Phases uh, oh. and phases. I, I really can't wait to be able to paint my uh, Terrapin uh, Jade Green. Jade Green. Ooh. I like it. That would be great. That'd be a great yeah. color for that ship specifically. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Sultan asks for the Cutlass, uh, custom bathroom? No, there will never be a bathroom in the Cutlass. Yeah, I mean, you just stick your butt out the door. Yeah. Really. <laughs> uh, Fastcart <laughs> asks, when are you going to try to get guests from CIG back on, and why should the first guest be Jay Lee? Uh, Shiver? Hey, uh, Jay Lee, you want to come on? It doesn't I work that way anymore. A thing to CIG <laughs> saying... Can we have anyone from your staff on our podcast brackets, especially Melissa Estrada, close brackets? And they never got back to me. I can't imagine why. <laughs> we we have we have uh, requested people a couple times. Uh, they uh, what was it? At one point, the system like they hadn't figured out the system for requesting, so they weren't really doing any requests for people to come on. And then I don't know what really happened after that, but. We should we'll probably put like, another request. Apparently, we we will we will try again. We'll we'll do another like request for uh, for you know maybe Jay Lee to come on and and hang out. But uh, that's a funny way to pronounce Melissa Estrada. Oh, God damn it, sure. Uh, Elise asks, uh, Eris, what will be the first <laughs> game you introduce insert baby name to? Uh, so. Mario forty six. It's been huh. an interest. It's been an interesting week in Babyland. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, currently, we call uh, the baby Bean. Um, current front runner. I guess I should like give a baby update every week, just because. Uh, current front runners for names are for a girl Riley, and for a boy still Lincoln. Um. Only if First, you call him Link. <laughs> I'd, I'd call him Link, yeah. The only the only problem I have with Riley right now is he can't really shorten Riley unless he shortened it to Lee. But then or I'd have Rye. to add a J in front, and that would just be weird. Um, <laughs> First game to introduce Baby Bean to? Maybe Star Flower. Citizen. <laughs> Hell no, not Star Citizen. <laughs> um, Flower. Flower is a great game. Some Mario. Smash Bros. Get her right, right addicted to Smash Bros. Right off the bat. Um, I don't know. It's gonna. We're gonna see. I've got uh, my other daughter Mackenzie really, really into Smash Bros. lately, which is kind of cool. So nice. Uh, Bryce, Serena, don't worry. I've I've already got a top hat ready. Uh, okay. Two more questions. Uh, FC asks, would any of you like to run an in-game chop shop? Uh, yeah. Yep. Shiver would just blow everyone up. No, he's going to sell all, of, all of the crap to me that he picks up from killing I'm not set, no 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 I've got no I'm not a pirate I'm not interested in making profit off it I just want to make I just want to ruin people's days I'm you just going to follow to afford your ammunition I, I'm going to follow Shiver yeah. in a reclaimer sweep up after him Oh that's fair and then I'll sell it to you Deal Triangularity is there anything you want to like run in the verse Well uh, I'm going to go on Viking I mean come on I thought it was quite, well, obvious. Fair enough. Uh, Ronin42 asks, when, you think, when do you think we'll get a UI that we can read on different backgrounds? Example, light green and bright atmosphere of Damar. 2021. 2949. So this year. I don't know. <laughs> 2949 is this year. I 
I know too much about Star Simpson. Anyway, I, I know. I, <laughs> I, I I said 2940, and I was gonna say next year, and then I was like, well, I already said the four. I'm fucked, so I just ran with it. Um, Fair enough. <laughs> hey, Jaylee, what are we getting? What, yeah, Jaylee, what <laughs> are we getting? Totally UI outside. that we can read? Totally outside your wheel, wheel notes, but what are we getting? New UI is <laughs> art. It is. It's just not what he does. Uh, Fastcart asks, Eris, when will you buy your baby their first Star Citizen package? Um, so I I bought Mrs. Eris a package when we started uh, when we started dating. I funnily, I, I've actually got to figure out how to reclaim that one somehow. Maybe I I bought oh a package. God, I hope you didn't do that on the first date. Not the first date. Hi, nice no. to meet you. I've got you a starship. Uh, <laughs> you're laughing, but like, our, probably the third week we'd known each other, I gave her my old computer so that we could both sign up for World of Warcraft and, and play WoW together. Um, that's, I can understand, that's fine. That, that's a three week wait. You waited quite a long time for that. I think so. No, I need to figure out how to reclaim the package I bought for my ex. Oh, because Star Citizen's been going long enough. Uh, <laughs> but you're ready to get married and have a baby on the way. And you bought a package for your ex. I bought a package for my ex. I bought her an Aurora. Uh, oh, boy. What did you buy the new one? An Aurora. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be fair. <laughs> Yeah. Um, disappointed the to way, be honest I was hoping you were going to say something like a 300 at least no. by the way I I happened to meet David for the first time in person um, in the second week of their relationship <laughs> and honestly it felt like they were married <laughs> <laughs> anyway the first so I gave her my old PC and it was it's a really nice case, but it's one of those cases with a really big fan at the top. Um, and that first night we just turned it on, plugged it in, sat it beside a desk we had gotten her and she sat down. The first night she accidentally knocked over a glass of wine <laughs> and the entire glass of wine fell right into that fan while the computer was running. And she's she's letting you go to CitizenCon this year, right? And it shut down immediately. Like, it immediately, all power went off, and she just broke out crying. She was sitting there bawling her eyes out, and I was sitting there holding her and trying to calm her down for a good 45 minutes. And I was like, look, it's okay. Just look. And I sat her down and went over. I just hit power on the computer. Came back to life. Nothing wrong with it. You're lucky. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm actually pretty sure that the wine went right down and into the power supply. And it <laughs> shut down. And then eventually right. evaporated enough that we could turn it on. But like... It was a bonding moment, okay? It was a <laughs> bonding a moment. Bonding moment. <laughs> um, okay, I want to cover, like, two things before we start to end here. Uh, tomorrow, 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, so, like today, but an hour ago, tomorrow, we're going to be starting our uh, E3 coverage. We're going to be going pretty much all day tomorrow up until the last of it. And then we're and going to be going Monday. pretty much all day Monday. Uh, tomorrow we've got uh, myself, Nakara, Jake, and Papa Dolvac uh, for Papa most Dolvac of the day, is. which is going to be insane. And then at some point we're actually swapping out Dolvac for an Astro Pub who's going to be joining us. And we're going to have Astro Pub for the Monday. So join us for that. We're going to be covering all of E3 uh We'll like have it on our screen and we'll watch it and we'll talk about mm -hmm. it and we'll like blah 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 blah. Oh, I like this yeah. game. Oh no, your opinions are Why garbage. Why is Mickey Jake? Mouse there? Because it's Jake. Oh, okay. So join us for that tomorrow. Uh, yeah, we'll 
we'll talk over it, but we'll also be quiet over it. I, I don't know what we're doing yet. I'm not sure if we're going to talk over it or if we're going to um, just watch it and then come back. We'll we'll play it by ear. I don't remember what we did last year, honestly, but uh, join us for it. It's also Jake nice. Will Jake will know. It's also nicer because uh, we won't have 40,000 people in our chat. We'll have like maybe 12. Um, yeah. So you'll be able to talk to each other rather than just seeing a whole bunch of <clears throat> images of penises. I got something stuck in my throat. <laughs> Is it beer? Uh, yes, it is beer, but. Mm. <laughs> Takes another swig of beer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that's what we're doing tomorrow and Monday. Uh, hey, Nakar, are we going to do a space show Tuesday? I'm going to say tentatively no after streaming for two days straight. Yeah, I don't think, I think we'll have to, to let it go till next week. Just because yeah. we're we're gonna be streaming um, for we're gonna two days stream straight. all day tomorrow and all day Monday. I don't yeah. think it's yeah. Um, and also there is a SpaceX launch on Wednesday, so I might cover that. Okay. So that's a lot of streaming. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tranquility. Um, Again, thank you so much for joining us. Where? Yeah, what, it was awesome. What are you up to these days? Is there anywhere mm. anyone can go find you or just no. chat with you in the Relay Discord? If, if yeah. you know, they they want to. I try to stay away from people. <laughs> to be fair, so do I. <laughs> well, you do a very bad job. <laughs> I mean, I tend to stay away from people. There's a reason we're doing this over the internet. Yeah. I'm not near anyone. It's perfect. Social interaction... Without any of the weird touching or smells or hair or, like, stuff. Something wrong, Shiver? Am I making you uncomfortable? How, how do you greet people? Shaving their heads. I was wondering that where that was going. Yeah. yeah. Be, um, it'd be weirder if you were, like, shaving their arms or something. Uh, actually, it's I, I sh also shave the hair off their big toes. Oh, just well, their big toes. Just the big question. ones. What if they're not hobbits? Everyone has hair on their big toes. <laughs> it's science. Well, <clears throat> if they don't have feet, they don't have I don't hair think on that's their science. big toes. I mean, fair, fair. Uh, one of my thumbs has one hair on it. The other thumb has none. I think we know which hand he used for well, <laughs> activities. Thank you so much for coming out, everyone. I think that this is a good place for us to end the show. Clearly, we have run out of important things to talk about and have moved on to talking about the number of hair follicles on our thumbs. Um, if you like not this us. kind of... Not all of us as a collective, just you. Just you talking about the hair follicles on your thumb. I mean... But I am our collective. Uh... Yep. Okay, yep. true. Uh, uh, thank you all for showing up. Thank you everyone for showing up. Uh, Jay Lee, thank you so much for coming on and uh, giving us the release date for, for Squadron 42. It's really appreciated that you'd, uh, you'd come and do that for us. Um, yeah. It was it was great. Uh, so I, I'm a little disappointed that uh, the, 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 that was the date you chose. But <laughs> I'm glad you I'm glad that you confirmed Malcolm McDowell is making an appearance in Squadron. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm also really really impressed that you guys. Um, I'm gonna stop. Let's just end it. I'm done. Uh, thank you so much for coming out, everyone. Uh, great as always. Uh, go watch the Astro Pub. I believe he's doing a show uh, this afternoon, two hours from now, uh, twitch.tv slash the Astro Pub. Uh, go watch that because uh, he knows what he's talking about, whereas we sort of just ramble on and drink beer and talk about uh, thumb hair. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.